One of the most prevailing issues within the world of politics today is polarization. As you probably know from your recent Thanksgiving dinner, you could probably sit down at any table and see a split 50-50 down the line of people who are on the left and people who are on the right. But we don't have to look at just anecdotal evidence to prove or support this idea. If we look at data showing the issues that both Democrats and Republicans are ideologically aligned on, over the last 20 years, that number has decreased exponentially. As you can see from 1994 to 2014, it has absolutely decreased. We can also look at U.S. Senate voting data, where from 1970 to the present day, votes within Congress have become increasingly polarized due to the political party that you are on. Now, there can be many explanations and theories as to why this is happening, but one of the biggest and most uh, relevant theories is a theory by Steven Skronek called Presidential Leadership in Political Time. He theorizes that in each political era or cultural identity of a political time uh, over a series of decades, there are four types of presidential leadership. And by the end and last fourth presidential type of leadership, uh, there is an increasing amount of polarization that resets into a new political era. So today I'm going to be discussing this theory and explain to you why it might be important in our present day. First, his first type of president is the Reconstruction president. This is named after Abraham Lincoln and the Reconstruction era, back at a time when things were being reconstructed in the South following the Civil War. This president is usually the resetting of political time. This is when the era begins within the political section and this president portrays the political era in the, his own image. He takes his own personal beliefs and cultural identity of the party and starts the political era in his own, view, in his own sort of nature. Next, we have an articulation president. Oftentimes, this is a handpicked successor from the previous um, reconstruction president. But oftentimes, this is someone who is an orthodox innovator, someone who takes from the cultural identities of the time and then works on those by new ways and means in getting to those cultural identifiers. Uh, they often face a thing called manager's dilemma, meaning they don't always succeed to the level of their predecessors, meaning that the party often fractions into different sections, uh, those supporting the, the new president and those uh, against the new president's leadership. And this type of president, along with the next type of president, is often articulated twice, with its second rendition uh, not being a handpicked successor, but continuing the orthodox innovation, uh, similar to the other one. I'll get, I'll get to this later in the presentation. Next, we have a preemptive president. This is someone who disagrees with the current cultural regime of the political era. Uh, someone who identifies with the opposition party, but doesn't have enough political power to fight against that cultural era. Uh, someone who often cannot pass policies during their time in office, someone who has trouble working with the other side and often has to compromise in order to pass their own political ideas. And this, this again, is often ha has a second rendition where uh, it is often, the second rendition often has more political power than the previous one. Finally, we come to our disjunction president. This is someone who is increasingly associated with an illegitimate order of politics, someone who's, um, uh, who's uh, whose cabinet is often dysfunctional, whose party doesn't always work with the other side, and is increasingly illegitimate in its political stance. This often tears apart the entire regime in which it is set upon and leads back into our Reconstruction president. Now, we can take this idea and this theory and apply it to our actual history. If we look at the 1930s to the 1970s in the New Deal political era, we can see that FDR would be our Reconstruction president, passing New Deal policies and liberal agenda of welfare, uh, social inequality and such. Next we have Truman who integrated the army, handpicked successor to FDR. Following Truman we have Roosevelt, a big supporter of uh, the military industrial complex, was a Republican, but wasn't able to pass all of the policies he wanted to. 
Then we come back to JFK LBJ. They're tied together because JFK unfortunately died halfway through his presidency. Um, but they passed things like the Civil Rights Act and various other uh, economic, social, and equal, uh, social equality acts in order to get that forward. Then we have Nixon and Ford. Nixon uh, resigned after the Watergate incident, so those two are tied together. Uh, and they, uh, while passing conservative policies like the drug war and supporting Vietnam, they also had to do things like create the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, or uh, increasing the welfare state and such. And finally, we end with Jimmy Carter, who not only broke down the entire economy, but failed us in foreign policy with the Iran hostage deal, and eventually started the next political era, the Reagan era. So we start with Reagan as our reconstruction, Bush Sr.'s articulation, Clinton as preemptive, second articulation as Bush Jr., and finally, the second preemptive as Obama. Now, you may be wondering, who is our disjunction president? Well, many uh, scholars believe that this next disjunction president is Donald Trump. Uh, people theorize that his uh, frustrated cabinet may bring down the Reaganite political era that has stayed with us for over the last few decades. Now, what that next political era that he sets up is still unknown because his presidency has not ended yet. But people have two different theories. One is that it's a reawakening of the New Deal era, a place where liberal policies are again reenacted, and it's a stronghold for liberal policies, whereas the second option is something entirely different that we've never seen before. Something not conservative, something not liberal, but something more volatile. Maybe the end of democracy, the end of uh, the country as we know it. Who knows? Again, we won't know this until the presidency ends. However, what I would say about our political polarization is that it's important that you get out and talk with your family members about your political ideas. We will never get anywhere unless we talk with one another and stop this political polarization by understanding that everyone has different viewpoints and everyone must come together and realize that we all just have different opinions. So get out there and vote in 2020 because we want to see that new political era be the best one. Thank you.